Do you live in a city and you're in the market for a heating and air system? In this video, I want to give you six tips or six things to think about when you're selecting your new heating and air system. And before I dive into these, I just want you to know that some of these things that we're going to go over, they're actual laws now. So some cities have said, look, you know, some of these things, we're not just recommending you meet these standards, but we're now saying in addition to codes, national codes and all that stuff, we're saying, look, you're going to meet these requirements to install a heating and air system in your city. And so I would be mindful of that. If you're not sure what those laws are or what the ordinances are or anything like that, definitely find out. I have heard horror stories where people have paid all this money and they've now found out that there are consequences for the system that they put in. And so I'm not going to go through all of that, but just want you to be aware of that. Let's first talk about decibel levels or sound levels. A lot of heating and air systems back in the day would get well above 70 or 80 decibels. They were very loud. They sounded like diesel engines in some cases. I remember some of them when they would turn on, I mean, it just sounded like a jet engine outside the bedroom window. So because of that, we would a lot of times be mindful of that. We would say, look, don't put the heating and air unit outside near a bedroom window because you're not going to get any sleep. Now we're seeing systems well below 60 decibels. To put that in perspective, when you're talking about 70 decibels, we're talking about things like hair dryers, vacuum cleaners, and even dishwashers. But when we're talking about below 60 decibels, a typical normal conversation that you're going to have with somebody is going to be around 60 decibels. Not me. I talk loud, but your average Joe when they're talking is going to be around 60 decibels. So some of these systems, when they're running, you don't even know it. Like you have to walk up to the system and kind of look down in it, see if that fan's turning because they've gotten so quiet. And what's really good is if the max decibel level is below 60 and it's an inverter system, a lot of these systems aren't running at 100% capacity all the time. So again, there are times they're just barely running. So if you're in a city, a lot of cities have cracked down on this, noise pollution, things like that. And they have said, look, there is a maximum to the system we're going to allow you to install now. And you should be mindful of that. Next, let's talk about heating and air systems and how the size of them have changed. Even today, we have unitary systems where they have what we call them a trash can style, where the fan blows out the top. The systems themselves as efficiencies and sear and all that stuff started requiring the systems to be more efficient. Well, those coils had to get bigger to equate for that. We have installed systems where we've pulled out a system that just looks like a little trash can at their house house and then the system we installed to replace it to meet those efficiency ratings are sometimes almost as tall as me. I mean they're just crazy how big some of these systems have gotten. One thing a lot of companies have started doing and I believe there will come a day where you just probably won't even see unitary style systems anymore or at least not as we know them now and that is a lot of systems have what we call side discharge outdoor units. This is nothing new. You've seen them but a lot of folks will associate those where the fan blows out the front instead of the top and they associate that with like a mini split. We're now seeing conventional systems today. Most of the big brands have come out with some form of a side discharge system. And why does that matter? Well, a lot of those side discharge systems just simply take up less real estate than what a unitary style would. And to piggyback off of that, another thing we've seen a lot of folks doing is instead of your typical, you know, set the unit on the ground with a pad or however you're used to setting them, they're coming out with all kinds of creative ways like wall brackets and platforms and things like that to get those systems out of the way. You're not having to worry about going down an alley with units on top of one another. Creative ways for those systems to not be in the way, not take up as much room, and you can still be comfortable in your house with that system being kind of tucked away somewhere. And then finally, let's talk about clearances because just going from a unitary style where most of those systems require, I'd say a foot to a foot and a half of clearance around them. And when I say clearance, I mean anything, walls, bushes, anything that would impede airflow going across that coil well, now they've got systems that are requiring just a few inches. That side discharge unit that has the fan blowing out the front, they're being able to set that unit very close to a wall. It doesn't require as much clearance. It still gets the amount of airflow across the coil that it's requiring. And so the clearances have reduced dramatically. So now you've got a smaller unit, you've got a smaller clearance, 
and you've gone from a unit that could possibly, I've seen systems that would need well over four feet, maybe even five feet of area, square footage, if you will, length away from the home. And now you've got systems that are just a foot or two, just right up against that house and taking up very little space. Next, when you're considering a new heating and air system is a lot of the efficiencies today. I've done other videos talking about new codes and things that are coming out where the EPA is saying, you gotta reach these standards. But in some places, especially metropolitan areas, they're even requiring even higher standards than that. So they're saying, look, you're gonna meet these standards. Instead of 14 SEER, you've gotta install systems that's now 18 SEER. Or instead of single stage systems, I do know that there are some cities saying, no more single stage. We only wanna see inverter systems or something of that sort. And then finally, just a small tip that if you are in a city, you're buying a new heating and air system and you're considering some of the things that I'm talking about, I would find a heating and air company that is someone that's been doing this. They're not new to the game. They're not trying this out. You don't wanna be their guinea pig. Find a company that maybe they could even provide a reference or two, but just somebody that this is not their first rodeo. They should have pictures on their website, in my opinion, or on their social media of some of the other side discharge or inverter systems they've been installing. Why is that a big deal? Because I can tell you there is a big percentage of residential heating and air professionals that are just not getting with it, that they are kind of putting their foot in the sand and they're not getting pushed back any more than they have to. They're saying, look, I'm not doing inverter systems. I don't think they're worth it. I don't think that they're this or that. They're just simply not on board with a lot of the new technology that's coming out. Again, you don't wanna be someone's guinea pig. Find somebody that's been doing it. Even if you have to pay a little bit more, might be worth it in the end. That way you don't have any headaches when you're dealing with buying a heating and air system with these newer technologies or clearances or decibel levels. Anyway, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.